Corn School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Headline Amp Fungicide and Pride Seeds. Hi, I'm Bernard Tobin. Welcome to the Corn School. Today I'm at the Elora Research Station in Ontario, catching up with Ben Ross, our Omafra's corn lead. Ben, how's it going? Good, Bernard. How are you? I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. Hey, um, we're getting ready to roll. Um, do some planting. A lot of conversations this winter about nitrogen and the need for nitrogen, how to manage it, the price, and all those type of things. I want to talk to you about uh, you know some of the research that you've done and the need to do more. And one thing you say is growers should be doing their own research. Yeah, so 100%. So yeah, obviously, like you said, you know, nitrogen's been a hot topic this winter time with where prices have gone. And uh, you know, we've got tools to kind of give growers an idea where to start with that I think do a generally good job, but. Now, if your question is what's the right nitrogen rate on my farm, I think some on farm there's nothing better for guidance than on farm data. So Ben, let's talk about how we can do it on our farm. You've got three ideas here. I'm um, starting with the in rate ramp. Tell us about it. Yeah. So anytime we're doing research trials, uh, you know, for for research ourselves, usually the, the best and most accurate way to do it is build yourself a nitrogen response curve or ramp. So. In most cases, we would put five rates of nitrogen out. You know, we start with a zero or, or maybe a starter only nitrogen rate. And then we incrementally increase rates until we hit maybe somewhere between 200 and 250 pounds. Somewhere where we think nitrogen is maxed out yields uh, for that field. So that will give you a ramp. And you know, if you look at the ramp at the end of the year, you'll kind of see where your yields increase and eventually they'll likely plateau. And that optimum end rate's usually a little bit before those yields plateau on that ramp. What about delta yield, another approach that you have? Yeah, so the, well, the ramp is probably the most accurate approach. It's a fair bit of work because you've got to do five rates and replicate it a number of times. So there's a really nice method that instead of doing all five rates, just put the zero out and just put the end rich out. The difference in yield between the zero and the end rich is going to give us an idea of response in that field. And then we've got a tool at gocorn.net called the end rate evaluator tool. If you plug your zero end yield and your end rich yield into that tool, it will give you an estimate of what Merring would have been without having to do those five rates of nitrogen. How do we split it, um, Ben? You've got different rates. Are we going like 30 pounds? What's the, what's the, what's the setup? Yeah, so if you're going to go from, you know, zero to 250, you know, I would, uh, I would cut that into four or five blocks and then just incrementally increase your rates equally up until you get to your non-limiting rate of whatever it might be, 220, 230, 40 pounds of nitrogen, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. any, any growers you know doing this now? Because obviously uh, we can learn from each other. Yeah, so I, I don't know growers specifically doing the, the ramps or the delta yields, but I know some growers that might do what you might call the 30 pound test. So they've got their grower rate they normally do in the field. They're gonna do a strip or two in the field that's 30 pounds less than their normal rate and a strip or two that's 30 pounds higher than their normal rate. So I've talked to one grower who does this every year in their corn fields. Uh, over a number of years, he's built a really nice data set and he knows which fields of his reliably need more nitrogen, which fields he can cut nitrogen rates back on and, uh, and gives him a pretty good idea how to zero in on his rates across the farm, but also individually by field. And you're gonna be doing some of this work with Thames Valley this year. Yeah, so Thames Valley Soil and Crop, one of their projects this year, given everything we've talked about with nitrogen, is to do some delta yield strips. So real, again, really easy. They're gonna do some zero end strips, some end rich strips, and check the yields of those two strips at the end of the year. Yeah, so let's finally, let's talk about the need to replicate here. And you know, do it year after year. You're not gonna learn everything you need to know in year one. And a little bit of story about what we're starting, where we're starting right now. Yeah, so I, th I think we all know this, right? Nitrogen's variable year to year. So you can do a really good job in one year and get a number but I wouldn't look at that number and say, okay, that's the rate I need for my farm. I'm good from here on in. So we really need to replicate things across a number of years. So the more years you have, I think the better data set and better feel for nitrogen response you can get on your farm. So uh, yeah, the feel we're standing in, uh, anytime we talk nitrogen, we always talk about a trial that Bill Dean had done quite often. This is Bill Dean's IPNI trial or, or where it was. It's not, uh, not anymore, but uh, uh, Bill had put, you know, multiple nitrogen rates out in this field, looked at pre-plant versus side dress and things like that. And uh, what he found was that, you know, over the 10 years, even when you're on the exact same piece of ground every year, there's a lot of variability year to year in terms of end response, even in a relatively small area. So if you look at his data set, I think in the worst year was the, the drought year of 2012. Yields here were only 120 bushels an acre and optimum end rate was really low. In exceptionally high yielding years, I think optimum end rate was over 200 pounds an acre. But for most years, you know, eight or nine years out of 10, it was kind of in that 160 to 180 range. So 
having a good history gives you an idea of where, where rates are going to fall out over the longer term. Now, Ben, it's going to get busy in a bit here. You've got a lot of crop to get in the ground. I mean, how do we make time for this? And, you know, it, the commitment, uh, you'd say it's worth the investment. Yeah, so I think, you know, don't overthink it. You know, the simplest one is to do the delta yield or the 30 pound test where you're going over and under. Start it for a year or two, get your hands, uh, you know, kind of get a feel for it and you can expand it and try it on more fields after that to, to build a, start to build a data set on your farm. But I think just start simple. Awesome. Hey, um, thank you so much for joining us on the Corn School. Always great to have you. Thanks, Bernard.